Hello and welcome back. I know at the end of last week's video, I said we'd have a look at something from the old early Hornby Railways period, perhaps the, the, the late trying Hornby period, but I lied. And we're going to have a look at something from the old trying Railways period. In fact, this, this set spanned the two periods. It was made between 63 and 67. 160,000 of these sets were made. That, that's quite a number, isn't there? So I imagine there was a slight variation in the artwork. Maybe this changed to trying Hornby and, and the locomotive change. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So we'll just have a swift look at the box. There is a little bit of damage on the box. And this corner here has come away a little bit, but uh, nothing too bad. Lovely illustration. And now we've got all the information there. H O double O. Number of different languages here. Made in England. Rovex scale models limited. There's the old catalogue number there. The price could have gone here, but sadly it isn't present on this box. We'll just spin it around and have a look. So you can see rusty parts where, where the old staples are gone through the box. Nothing too bad though. It's pretty, pretty nice condition for its age, I think. I love this white panel on there. Really lovely thing. It's just brown cardboard on, on the back. Just have a look at that. The effect of tape there and there. So we'll spin that around and we'll have a look at the contents. So we'll just pop that down and lift off the old lid. As I say, 160,000 of these over the years. That's, that's quite a number, isn't it? We'll just pop that to one side. Imagine Hornby today would like to sell 160,000 of anything. So there we have the set. We've got the old clockwork top tank locomotive here. Now she was R657. Now there was a variation on this. This one has connection rods and, and uh, red wheels. So I think from 65 on the model was cheapened and they took away the old connection rods. So this was uh, had, a, had a separate model number apparently and, and it became R660. Uh, we'll put that to one side. And we've got this wonderful red and yellow coach, R720. I don't believe these were ever sold individually. They were, they were just sold uh, as part of these sets and they, they did change over the years. From what I've read, these, these could have been available with buffer heads in and possibly interiors. And I believe there's a variant with, with a brake coach roof on here, just from the standard nine inch coaches. So it does have the old pinpoint axles. So it is a fairly bright thing, isn't it? Lo lovely colour. So we just pop that down. And eight sections of uh, R483 first radius double double curve, so it makes a, a, a full circle. I've got the all-important key. Sadly, just, just one key, not like the old uh, set we saw earlier in the year. I think that was the RS2. It came with two keys, a great selling feature, because I imagine these went missing quite rapidly. And now we've got the old locomotive. We'll just pop that out. I say it has got the old connection rods and the old BR decal, which I think is rather smart, isn't it? Has a little damage there. So well, it's got to be expected really with an item like this. It would have been used round and round the track on the old living room carpet, I imagine. So pretty little thing. And we'll uh, have a look at this running. So we'll, we'll give her a bit of a wind and then we'll, we'll see how we do with it. It does feel quite fragile. A little click there. And that's as, as much as I dare wind it, I think. So we'll pop the old key down and we'll get her on the track. We'll hook her up. That coupling hook in there. And then we'll release the old brake and see how she does. And off we go. Plenty of power there. That's once around. Looking good. And twice around. Better than I thought. And almost three times around. Running out of energy now. And I think that's about all she's going to do. That's pretty good. I'll just have a, another swift look at the old box here. Now, I, I forgot to mention earlier that the, these sort of track holders here were missing when, when I got the, got the set. So I've just manufactured some more, quite crudely, out of uh, corrugated card and, and yellow paper stuck to it. 
So th that's what it would have looked like. Um, these sort of track holders, and I believe perhaps an elastic band around, maybe to hold hold them in place. But so uh, when I did get the set, it just had the the old locomotive, no track, and uh, really it, the picture on the box was enough for for me to bid for it, and uh, uh, I really like it. So I think the the old friction of, of all these wheels here and the weight the, the coach does weigh quite a bit. It's a uh, it's uh, taken the energy out of that, that old clockwork motor. I bet she would have had more power that when she was fresh out of the factory. So we'll give her a go without the coach on and see how we do. So we'll give her another wind here. So we'll give it. And again, that feels just like I had it before. So we'll pop her on the track. Let's we'll see how she does this time. So go and let the old brake off. Lots more energy available now. Round and round she goes. It's a shame we can't get a couple of hook on the on the front end of this. We could have uh, double headed it with the other other little clockwork I've got there. Perhaps that's for another day. Just have a, a swift look at the old body here. These are produced in a number of colours over the years and, and some slight variations. I think some of them didn't have these. Uh, cylinder blocks here. There is some damage on the bodywork here, it's not surprising really, it's missing part of a, a front step there. The old decal seem to have survived quite well over the years, don't they? So the old key would have gone through there, you can see some scratching where people have been aiming the key through the hole there. So screw goes straight down the chimney, securing screw, holds the old chassis in, nice hefty screw there. Nice hole in the top of the cab roof there for the old brake lever. Great riveting around that plate, isn't it? Lovely coal, ro coal load, sorry. I think the, the windows are a terrific shape there in the back. Really quite quite a pretty thing. The old coupler on the back, I don't think ever had a hook. I think they were sold without them. I might be wrong. It just held in with a single flathead screw there. Fairly rusty and you can see the effects of uh, crashing into things perhaps there. So we do have Triang's name on the inside here. Uh, we'll just see that in focus and we've got built in Britain just down there so survived fairly well I think so we'll just pop that down and we'll, we'll have a swift look at the old motor so here we go now they produce these in the uh, tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands from the early 60s right through into the 70s I think possibly 80s I'm not quite sure I don't think the motor changed very much from its uh, first run right the way through to when they stopped making it. Just a mass produced thing, throw away. Possibly, I suppose you could think of it as throw away. They weren't designed to last very long at all. Um, I think you would get one of these sets for Christmas and probably by July it may well have been worn out. Perhaps effects of overwinding perhaps. Imagine, I know as a child I must have broken a few clockwork toys. Fairly lively thing. Lovely set of cogs just watching that go round, isn't it? Really quite a beautiful thing. So here's the old uh, one with the BR logo on it and here, here's the other one I showed earlier. So I think out of interest, we'll see how this one does uh, around the circle of track with the coach. So we'll just pop this one to side. I, know, I said it would be good to double head them, but if we look, we've got no real way of attaching a coupling to the front there. So one would just race away from the other with the load of the coach, so sadly, can't do that today but maybe another day so we'll pop that down and we'll, uh, we'll give this one a wind and it feels an easier wind than the other one although it stops earlier so I don't wind that any more than that so we'll, we'll pop the old key down and then we'll, we'll pop her on the track so I think it was just a little over three circuits wasn't it that the, the other one went so we'll, we'll let that one go and away she goes. So I left one. Sounds a little quieter. I think she's run out of energy already. Um, that's two. I don't think she's going to get all the way around, is she? No, nope, possibly. Going to get three out of it. Yep, and a little bit more perhaps. So both pretty much the same, just three and a bit. There she is, all back together. 
I didn't point out earlier that she doesn't have buffer heads though, though she has got provision to have them have them put in there if we look. So we'll put her to one side, just have a look at the old uh, 1964 catalogue. She doesn't seem to have appeared this set in, in the old um, 1963 catalogue. So from what I read, the, the trade set was available from 63, but maybe it just didn't make it in time to be included. We'll just pick that up and see we've got two variations of the old set here. We've got one here calling it R, RS59, the older electric version of the set. And here we've got old uh, RS49, consists of R657 clockwork tank locomotive with key, R720 coach and eight sections of R483 double curves. Track forms a circle layout, 32 inches, 81 centimeters in diameter and it was 17 and 6 for the clockwork variant, 39 and 6, the old electric invariant variant is quite a difference, isn't it? Still great to see the, the two variants on the old catalogue pages there. Been a start of something big, as they say, when you, when you got one of those for your birthday or Christmas. Swift look at the old cover, 64 cover, it really is quite striking, isn't it? That must be a Jaguar there, do we think? Got the old price there. Looks like rubber stamped on. Early 64, it says. That's a great looking thing, isn't it? Let's have a swift look at the old back of the catalogue there. There's buildings and they've got the Dominic motorway, roadway sections there. Really lovely thing. Notice while I was watching that video back and editing it, that when I'd reassembled the model, I'd got the weight in the wrong place. It, it, it had jumped up too high. It needs to to rest down here. So I've just rectified that and put that back together how it ought to be. Here I've got the old electric version of the top tank which was included in the uh, RS59 set. We can see the old keyholes being blanked out. Now this had a separate catalogue number of R659, although I'm not sure it was available separately. We do see she's got uh, the old buffer heads put in here. We've got a couple in on both ends and I believe this is the same chassis as used in the steeple cab and the industrial locomotives, the 04 industrial locomotives, Polly, Connie and uh, Nelly. So we'll pop her on the track and we'll, we'll see how she does with the old uh, coach here. I don't expect she'll have too much trouble with this. So we'll, we'll give her a little power and away she goes. Nice and smooth. The motor sounds terrific. So of course you could run at absolutely silly speeds until it jumps off the track, but I don't think we will. The other advantage of course of being electric is we can stop it where we like and we can also go backwards. So imagine the hours of fun you could have just with this circle of track. One of the reasons I did decided to do this old set instead of something from the old Hornby Railways or, or late Trying Railways period was because I received these in the post this week. These are some more of those lovely bright red and yellow nine inch coaches. And, uh, I, I bid on these on that well-known auction site and I was quite pleased to get them. Now they're in what you might call very uh, well stored, possibly in the damp condition. So they're going to need a little bit of work to clean them up. Now when I bid on them and I did realise they had the old buffers in them, the metal buffers, but I couldn't quite see the, through the windows just like we can now, but the, they do have seating units, which I, I was quite pleased with. Um, reading in Pat Hammond's book, it says they, these coaches originally came with, with seating units when they, when they were first released. So I'll just have a quick look at them. Sorry, this, this, one, this one out of the bunch has some minor damage on one of the bogies but the rest of the bogies seem to be intact so we'll just have a quick look at that again you can see the old seating unit possibly not quite sitting sitting where it should within the coach but again with a little bit of work these, these should be quite run quite beautifully really so we'll just pop that down and have a look at another one now this has the old composite roof which is how the, the model started out but i believe from what i've read that when the tools for the nine inch coaches were, were sent out to New Zealand, um, trying were, were left with the, the tool remaining to make these, perhaps, and just the tool 
for the old uh, brake roof. So there are batches of these with just white white brake roofs and, and composite coach bodies. So we'll just have a quick look at that. So I think when I've got these cleaned up, we'll, we'll do another video and we'll, we'll see these running with, with something. We'll, we'll see how, how we do with them. A little bit of work to do with them. Not nothing, nothing too major, I don't think. We'll just swiftly look over these models again before we go. We've got the two variants of the old clockwork top tank there, one with coupling rods and one without. Lovely yellow and red coach there with a white roof. And then we've got the electric version of the top tank, although she doesn't have cylinder blocks. She's got couplings at both ends and metal buffers. Now I think that probably is it for this time. Please do look back again next week. We shall try and look at something interesting again. But thanks for watching. Goodbye now.